Broken Backbone Squash Soup for Halloween, William Hovey Smith, 2017. I'm Hobie Smith, the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and this is one of our seasonal shows where we make meals from salvaged ingredients. This is Hobie Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and the Halloween lamp is lit, and once again we are producing a new to the world dish in honor of the season. To this time we are making a broken back squash soup. Now this strange looking squash here is a Hubbard squash instead of the usual pumpkin. Uh, more commonly I make dishes like bear paw pumpkin soup which uses pumpkin but now we have the Hubbard squash. And I have been waiting to produce this until we had a suitable piece of material which we now have gathered as well as to illustrate the use of our new cleaver. Like the Japanese bladesmiths of old, we don't ship something until we've had a chance to test it. The figure above is a representation of our quality control officer. And this particular cleaver is designed to cut backbone. And so, we have a backbone. Recently gathered. And we are going to proceed to clean it. I'm going to chop it into sections so that I can put it in a pot reasonably. Okay, so we remove this section for hound doggies, and we have some sections for cooking. One might assume that a cleaver that could cut a backbone could also very nicely work up a squash, and so we shall see. Yes. Okay. to do is remove the seeds and then we will proceed to cook the squash. At this intermediate stage we have this piece of meat which is just a little bit bloodshot and so this is going in a pot to be boiled for my dogs. The squash on this flat pan are going in the oven to cook at 350 degrees until it softens and then I can remove the meat from the skin. These mini large seed, pumpkin seed themselves are edible, so you can take these and you can dry them and toast them and shell them and eat them and they're just fine, they're just like any other squash seed and that's no problem at all. Now for me, I am going to dry these and in the spring, I'm going to put these on my food plot. So these are going to grow, naturally enough, over squash. And uh, if the deer gets some, fine. If I get some, fine. But I'm going to have a lot of hope of squash next year if these come up and do halfway well. But that's my plan for these. So everything about this is going to be used in one way or another. This is also something to do with your Halloween pumpkin. If you still got it and it's still good, cook it and eat it. 
it does very well as a vegetable. Now, about the cleaver, this was the big thing. How did the edge hold up? Well, feeling the edge right here. Still sharp. I don't feel any rolling of the edge. Yep, it passed its test. Now this will cut green bone. Will it cut cured bone? Well, now that's a horse of a different color. Uh, once you cure a bone, that is it dries out, the bone is a hard material and quite brittle indeed. And uh, I'm not sure. But for its intended purpose of cutting green backbone, this will do very well. So, it is passed, and I can ship it, and Ben, yeah, your cleaver's ready. We are starting to assemble our broken backbone squash soup for Halloween. And we have our stock here, which is down to pretty thick stock. This, this is very strong, so we just added some tomatoes. Some tomato paste, actually sauce, a can of corn, and some pinto beans that we'd already pre soaked. and pepper and a little bit of meat that we managed to salvage from the backbone. We're going to saute a little bit. can go on the stove in the back eye and this one on the stove on the front eye and we'll get both of them going simultaneously. Unlike the Brunswick stew I just made uh, this has not been smoked but the caramelization will give it a little bit of flavor. Just add the meat. We have not added any salt or black pepper or white pepper or any of that and I'm just going to let it stew and boil for a while and then do a taste to see exactly what I want to put in. What have we wound up with for our seasonal creations? We have here a Brunswick stew which I prepared the previous day and here our broken backbone squash soup. Now the Brunswick stew is quite different. Uh, it has a higher meat content. This also has butter beans in it. And as you will recall, this uh, has pinto beans. Now the pinto beans here have not been cooked altogether done. So there's a little al dente crunch to it, which actually I like. Uh, it gives the dish a little more savor and uh, an unusual character. Now, what both of these dishes illustrate is that when you have leftover foods, like these, the meat portions of this was already in the gut pile. 
It had been thrown away by other people. Okay? Similarly, uh, the squash and pumpkin. Millions of pounds of squash and pumpkin are thrown out each year around Halloween. These are perfectly edible and they should be consumed. In fact, this is an excellent base from which to teach kids something about cooking. Yes, the Halloween pumpkin can actually be eaten. Mm -hmm. Now it's best, of course, to start off with a fresh one that hadn't been previously carved and set out there and oxidized and smoked up and whatever, whatever. But uh, you'll find plenty of fresh pumpkins to be had for free a few weeks after Halloween. Now, you could add different things. What I finished the squash soup off with was about a tablespoon of salt, a teaspoon of black pepper, a tablespoon full of horseradish to give it just a little bit of kick, and a tad of butter. And that did very, very nicely. Could you have put other things in it? Depending on your palate, you might have used chili, you might have used coriander, or turmeric. So now, we get around to the tasting. This is quite chewy and smoky. Because remember, this started off as a smoked hog's head. It has a little vinegary taste to it, both from added vinegar as well as the acid that comes from the canned tomatoes. Okay, in contrast, this has a smoother taste. You do not get the taste of smoke from the meat because it was not. And you do get a, a good chew off these partially cooked pinto beans. I like this just as it is, but you could put more spices in it if you desire. But now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. All of my prize-winning outdoor books, including Extreme Muzzle Loading, Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing, contain recipes that anyone can cook. Using animal parts and vegetables that most people would throw away can provide a good base for soup and nutritious meals in times of famine, disasters, and wars. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 650 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.